What's up, guys? Today I want to talk about a subject that is a little painful for guitar players. And I want to talk about legato. I think it's a really important technique that we should not be afraid of. I'm saying afraid because I was, I was just, yeah, I was just kind of afraid and scared of um, working on legato because I thought I would not be able to do it. I want to understand what's the mechanism that we use to play that those colors. Now, the point of this video is to break it down into six levels that are really clear, really doable, and you can actually see great results if you practice it correctly within a week or two. Again, to work on this takes a long time. I'm not trying to give you guys shortcuts, but I am, well, I am giving you shortcuts, but I'm trying to just kind of like lay down in a clear way so you know how to work on that. Now, again, it took me a very long time to understand how these things work and I understand some of them and I'm gonna share what I know so it will help you. All right, so before we start, we need to understand what is legato. The, the sound is this. If we take F major scale, this is just alternate picking where I pick each note. If I'll play this legato, in a way I'm going from point A to point B and I'm touching the notes but I'm doing it very swiftly. So the point is like we can take a low note to the high note and, and basically kind of like do this like so it sounds like this on guitar. Right, so there's like this motion from here to here and we can fill it in with F major, it could be also which we'll talk about and all these ideas are a part of this video. Let's dive in. One, all right, so starting from zero, what is the framework that we're gonna use? So first we need to understand what the right hand and left hand are doing. So we're gonna use this hammer on idea. I'm gonna literally hammer on, play one note and hammer on the second note. I'm just using a shape, there's no deep musical idea here. And this is the shape I'm gonna use. And I'm playing all down strokes until I get here to the E string then I play all up strokes, and this is pull off. Now, the secret, in a way, to making this really happen is that we need to keep these two notes as balanced as possible. As if we're playing these two notes alternate picking, right, where we have control over the sound, same here. We want to really control the sound as much as possible. So. almost as if I'm alternate picking. So I really need to make sure that my hammer on, right, is, is strong enough and also accurate rhythmically. Let's do it in time. In time. Taking this video and want to support, probably the best way to do is checking out the Patreon. There's a ton of stuff, PDFs for this video, for other videos, and uh, it would mean a lot. Thank you. Okay, so this is the motion, and you can say, well, this is super simple and super easy, which is true. It's actually super simple and not crazy hard. The thing that we want to make sure is we are teaching ourselves very clearly what's happening. So the motion here is clear, the motion here is clear, and then what we can do is strengthen all the fingers. So the same way I'm doing one and two here, I'll do one, three, one, four, and I'll also do a little bigger stretches. I'll probably get to a fourth, sometimes I'll do even a, a, a tritone, which would sound like this, and I will also do that with different subdivisions. So you do wanna try and control it really clearly and tightly in a slow tempo and then you want to try to do different subdivisions once the motion is clear to try and push yourself a lot of it is also mental so you want to try and kind of think light you want to try and be like relax as much as possible and kind of like not be heavy if that makes any sense let's try it together <laughs> And 
and then going back. I would spend about five to 10 minutes on this with each one of the options of the fingers. So one, two, one, three, one, four, two, three, two, four, three, four. Different tempos, different subdivisions to really make the motion clear. Yes, guitar. So a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the idea of opening a workshop. So I'm doing it. And uh, there is a link below if you want to register. It's uh, just a, pff, right now a small group of people. It will be five, six people in a group that uh, will work with me for two months. And there are more details there too. All right, so you understand the motion, but we need content. So the first place I would go, so you can see how cool it is, is to take, for example, A flat major seven. So I'm just gonna take a major seven chord. Um, and I'm gonna play it two notes per string. So I'm using the same ideas that we did here, right? Just here. And the point of, of this is really connecting the this like mechanic of motion with musical ideas and shapes. And we'll go over a few more mechanics that will open up more ideas, but this is a great one to work on. So I would work on the basic four colors here. So I would do major seven. Seven, dominant, A seven. A minor seven. and A minor seven flat five, A half diminished. And notice how it's exactly the same motion of this, just different shapes. And we can definitely find more cool shapes later on. Wait, all right. So before we're gonna work on scales, and this is of course a huge part of legato, I want to make sure that our fingers are strong. So I'm going to give you guys one more exercise that I used to do. So when you play guitar, there are only a number of variations that you can play within those, you know, five, six frets. So what I used to do is say like, okay, I can do one, two, four. So I just made sure I can move between those shapes, even just as a shape. So I would literally play it hammer on and pull us in one shape, one kind of like non-musical almost, right? And that would sound like that. Okay, easy. Maybe now one, three, four, gonna be less easy. Remember that we want to make sure that we're strong, clear, and that pinky here, we want to hear it, we want to hear the same way that I'm alternate picking now. And then more options, one, two, four. And then weird options, one, two, four, but with a bigger stretch, so. Or one, three, four here. And then I would do that in time. Question, who is your favorite band? And I'm not talking about a single musician. I want a band, like a band band, a together band. Drop a comment. You get it, with all these permutations. And then I would just try to make sure that the movement between those string sets are clear. Sometimes I would have an issue moving between, for example, the G string and the B string. So I would slow it down and try to see what's happening and why is that harder or why is that's easier versus this. So then I say, ah, okay, the motion between this finger, the fourth finger and the first finger here, maybe that's the problem. And then sometimes it's not the problem. So I'll figure out exactly where the problem lies and I'll try to fix it. Again, slow but clear. Next, we're gonna now take F major. We're gonna take one shape and 
I'm gonna take this here and I'm gonna use three notes per string and I'm gonna do it extremely slow. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna really try to teach my fingers where things are. So I'm using the hammer on and pull off. Right now, just hammer on. And then sliding on the last note. Again, very slow. Like really teaching my hands and fingers. Trying to really learn where things are and how things sound. I think the sound is also a big deal. If you hear it, it's gonna be easier to play it. Of course, if we can play something physically, we start hearing it as well. So there's an interesting kind of connection between all these elements, but definitely trying to sing the scale, definitely trying to, even if it's just an intention going from here, right, going from this kind of like motion that you're imagining, again, like the saxophone, like a voice or a cello, like, like a slide, right? This is kind of like basically legato in a way, right? When I'm playing these notes. So what I would do first, I would really try to hit hard with his fingers. Kind of accurately. And then I would do that in time as well, slowly. Couple of times. Fast forward, and then I'll play it a little bit faster. Different subdivisions, same tempo. And of course, we can push it more, but the point is understanding the mechanism. If we can do that, we can really create a lot of these tensions. Okay, so let's say we understand the motion. We understand even F major with one position. There are more positions, of course, there are seven positions. If you want the full PDF, check out the Patreon. Seven position, each one starting from a different point, and I would just work in the same way over these positions, slowly and clearly. Now, like anything else, we need to make music with it. So just practicing it all day and not making music is not gonna be as helpful. So what I would do is loop one chord. Right, all I did was playing a little pentatonic thing around F, I, I vamped C sus, C7, so F major, right? So basically playing F mixolydian, uh, sorry, C mixolydian, F major, if you will. And then I played literally the position. I literally played, you know, I'm uh, sorry. I'll try to take the loop and really take it out of the exercise world. Super simple, I literally play the scale F major descending with legato. So there was nothing deep about it, but again, that technique, that idea and the facility that I'm working on can inform me with these different sounds and colors that are cool. And again, this is still very, very diatonic. Once we start adding chromaticism and we're flexible with those chromaticism, it's a whole new world. Lastly, I wanna encourage you guys to not stress out. I wanna say when you're practicing it, try to practice the mechanism, try to practice the fingerings in a clear and well-mannered way. <laughs> I'm, I'm just mean that try to be relaxed and not judge yourself again while practicing. Try to practice, give it a few weeks, practice for two weeks, really focus 15 minutes a day. I'm sure you'll find a lot of improvement, but just try to focus on the technicality and then try to take the ideas into the playground and make music with it, with the new elements. 
Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope this was cool and interesting, and I hope you don't see legato as a scary thing. And I think that's really important. See you guys in the next video. Peace.